Hello everyone. I thought we'd uh, start off our reloading series on uh, how I go through the process of uh, converting my uh, 223 slash 556 brass into blackout brass and uh, show you guys exactly what I do to do that. things I like about uh, reloading these blackouts is uh, I can take this little 223 case that I've uh, scrounged up and uh, actually change it into a blackout pretty easily and actually uh, enjoy doing that. Trim it off. Chamfer it out a little bit, a little bit of lube, run it through the size and die, run it through my trimmer, trim it to length. Deeper chamfer. Prime it. Add some powder. Swap another little head here. Of course, do a lot of brass. Don't have to do this on every round. But then we add our thirty caliber bullet. Bam, there it is. One blackout round, ready to go. Okay, that was uh, actually kind of fun, putting that little bugger together. I can't tell you how many hundreds of these things I've done like that. And like I said, I actually, actually enjoy doing it. Uh, the tool that makes it easy to cut that stuff is a uh, little mini cutoff saw that I got from uh, Harbor Freight. That is a uh, Anaconda brand. The little jig I got was from Squirrel Daddy off the internet. I think the jig, uh, of course it's got a little finger guard. To keep you from cutting yourself. I think the jig was about $14. The saw was less than $30. So there wasn't a whole lot of money invested in there. Basically going to take a uh, 223 brass. One's fired or not. Of course these are these are ones fired. And you're going to end up cutting that thing right at the bottom of the shoulder there. You know, that's where it's going to end up cutting off. And as you're feeding through these things, you can just whip through there, cut it. It's got a little stop you can catch it on. Cut it. Grab the next one, stick it in, and it'll keep pushing your little cutoffs out the out the one side of course this thing will throw a lot of little brass shavings around so you might want to do it in more of a contained area or environment where you can gather it up a lot easier clean up clean up be easier on it but uh, that's all it takes to convert one of these down of course then you resize it and it turns into something like that you see basically where it ended up once it was all trimmed and everything the uh powder you saw me just throw the powder off the bottom of the uh, powder measure this uh, powder we're using we're using 1680 or CFE black um, throws very nice in, in this powder thrower I mean as long as you watch your pressures on it but it's such a small amount I don't have any issues with it I can sit there with a scale and throw it and weigh it throw it weigh it throw it weigh it throw it weigh it and the scale hardly ever changes so I don't have any problem as long as nothing comes loose with your setup that you're adding more powder to it 
Oh, you stick your case over there, you can drop it right in, and off you go. And you're ready to ready to load that thing up. So it's been great. Uh, that stuff will work wonderful on a progressive progressive loader. And I believe they even make progressive tools to do your brass if you're uh, trying to do a whole lot of it. Um, the reason we're using two different powders, uh, we started off with the 1680. And it was uh, it was working pretty good, but I was having concerns about case fill because that is really not a whole lot of powder. I'm using 10 grains of powder. Here's an empty empty tray. I don't know if you can see that in there, but that's 10 grains of powder. But it fills the case up to about. About halfway maybe. Uh, so we went with the CFE Black. It's got a pretty similar burn rate and everything, but it's a bulkier, bulkier powder. So the reason we went with that is to get more more case fill with the uh, with with the 10 grains that we're using. Or it was as it, as we were going through this load process that that varied a whole lot. I think we went from nine grains to 11 grains trying to figure out what we needed but uh, this is the little jig tool we got Harbor Freight Squirrel Daddy's adapter down here good stuff if you're uh, trimming your uh, brass cutting your own 223 or 556 brass especially 556 brass if you're cutting it down you're probably going to want to pick up one of these nifty little tools it's a cartridge gauge for the 300 blackout uh, to check your brass to make sure it's got the right sizes on it. it should drop down in there that's the way you know you've got uh, got it cut and shouldered right and proper length and everything check your full loaded rounds in there it should drop in be in the zone drop out everything is cool the uh, 5.56 five, brass is actually has a tendency to be a little thicker. Of course, we're cutting that stuff right about there. So this thickness of this brass right in here, after you size it down, you're going to have to watch to make sure that it's actually not too thick, especially once you get it loaded up with a 30 caliber bullet in there. Boom, she will not go down all the way. So if you run into that issue with a particular type of brass you're using, you're probably going to have to get a neck turner and turn these things down a thousandths or so, just so you can get everybody to work in your gauge like it's supposed to. Or it may not chamber in your rifle. Well, hopefully that process wasn't uh, too confusing to everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to drop a comment down there and I'll answer it the best way I can. Um, this rifle here, I have only used that converted brass in it. Uh, and it works pretty good, so I don't have any, have any issues with doing it that way. Um, we're going to be doing further videos on the bullets and stuff that we're using and why we choose what bullets we're using uh, for the subsonic and mostly, mostly for a hunting issue. Uh, if you're subscribed, hit the uh, notification bell so you'll know when we get a get a video out. You won't miss any of these. But uh, we're going to carry on from there. Catch y'all next time.